Hi guys and welcome back. So technically this is a part two, but it's actually more like part six of the rebuild series. But this is part two of the engine rebuild part. And today I'm gonna to show you how to time the engine. It's really important that you get this right if you're taking your engine apart. If you haven't timed your engine before, there's a few things you need to take note of. In particular with this engine, we need to make sure that we are at what's called the TDC of the first cylinder. That's the rear cylinder on this bike. We need to make sure we're at TDC before we start timing the engine. And I'm gonna show you now how you can find that. If you don't know what TDC is, it's when the rear piston is at the very top of the cylinder on the compression stroke. You have four different strokes on this engine, that's why it's called a four stroke, and we need to make sure that it's at the top of the cylinder before we start timing everything up. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the spark plug from the rear cylinder. If you don't know what size socket you need, it is an 18 millimeter socket. And it's also a good idea to remove the front as well. You might as well remove both. Make sure that you haven't got anything in any of the exhaust or intake holes covering them up. This is the time now to remove all your towels and your rags and everything because we need there to be airflow while we're doing this. So remove that rear spark plug, 18 millimeter socket and we can move on to the next step. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab myself a screwdriver and I'm gonna put a bit of tape over the top. We will need this in a moment, but I don't want there to be any sharp contact between this screwdriver and the piston because we are gonna use this to put down through the hole of the spark plug to find top dead center. But you'll also need a 17 millimeter socket, okay? And now that socket is gonna sit on the crank important to remember that when we're rotating the engine we want to rotate it what would be counterclockwise we want it to be in the same direction of motion that the engine would be moving and as you can see we're making really slow small movements we're not doing this quickly okay so as you can see the cams and the chain and everything is already reassembled on my engine uh, this actually this whole TDC thing uh, was an afterthought I completely bypassed it when I was putting together the timing structure, which was just a big no-no. I, I had to come back and touch on this. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, the easiest way to find the compression stroke, which is what we need, is simply to place your finger or your thumb over the hole of the rear spark plug, and then continue to turn over the engine with your socket. Keep that thumb pushed down and it really is as simple as waiting for pressure to push past your thumb. Once air comes past, we know that we're on the compression stroke. There. You hear that push past? So we know that we're on the compression stroke now. So what we need is to take our screwdriver that we put a bit of tape over earlier, make sure this is secured and make sure that this is not a sharp blunt end. Make sure you just chuck a bit of tape on there. We're gonna pop that into the spark plug hole and we're just gonna very lightly continue to turn the engine over. You should start to feel the piston coming up the cylinder. And notice how the screwdriver is getting higher and higher, very slowly, but it is. And now it's starting to drop. So we know that we can put the ratchet in reverse the socket and we can come back ever so slightly. So I'm actually going to grab this very fine small pick. I don't recommend that you do what I'm about to do because if you drop this into the cylinder you might have trouble getting it back out and you might need to remove the top again. We don't really want to do that. So now you should notice, I'll pop that in there, there is a little bit, there's a resistance, we can feel the piston in there. Now if we take our socket and we keep rotating counterclockwise, you'll, you should notice that the pick starts to go down, which means the piston is going back down into the cylinder. 
Now if we bring that back up by going clockwise on the crank, and you want to find the point where there's no movement at all. And that is what we call TDC on the compression stroke. And we are definitely on the compression stroke. We've already made sure of that. Just make sure you're in focus here. And now if I keep going, the pick starts to go down with the piston. We come back up, the pick comes up, then it stops. And if I keep going, it rolls over the TDC point and starts dropping down again. So we need to come back right up until there. That is TDC. We can start moving on to actually installing these cams. Now I know, I said, I know I've got these cams already installed on this part of the video. This was an afterthought. I completely blanked it and thought, you know what? I need to go back and tell you guys about this because this is incredibly important. If you time the engine, Without this being on top dead center on the rear cylinder, you're going to have a whole lot of problems trying to time this engine. But now we can fast forward a little bit and the next shot you'll see is these cams and these chains and everything being assembled on top of the cylinder. Okay, folks, so we are really getting into it now. We are really getting into some pretty advanced stuff. If you are not confident with what you are doing, please stop and go and speak to a professional. If you've got this far and you think all of a sudden that you've bitten off more than you can chew, you need to start calling around local garages and mechanics and have them come and have a look at it for you. The first thing we need to do with this motor is we need to find the RT point. Now, if you look on the inside of the stator, this is the inside of the stator cover here, your cam and everything, your drive shaft here, if you look on this inner rim, you will see, you might need to rotate it ever so slightly, that there is an RT stamped on that ring. And what we need to do is we need to bring it straight up so that it's dead center with this top lug here. There's a line in between the R and the T. I'll get you a close up in a moment. And we want that dead center before we do anything at the top of the engine, before we start messing with the chains, the sprockets, the cams, etc. We need to make sure that that is in the center. I'm going to keep saying it. It needs to be in the center. Okay. So if you've already started putting your cams and your, your sprockets and your chains together on top, you need to take everything off and make sure that this is in the center. Grab yourself a 17 millimeter and very slowly rotate the engine until RT aligns at the top. We need to make sure that we've got our chain out to one side here. And remember, we left our stopper in the cam chain tensioner deliberately. It's still in there, even after we've put everything back together. I'm actually on the front one here. I'm using uh, an Allen key, a very small Allen key, but it's keeping the tension off of the chain, which is what we need right now. By keeping the tension off of the chain, it will allow us to put that chain back onto the sprocket and then onto the cam without any restriction. We need to locate our sprocket and we need to locate our cam. I mentioned in the previous video that these are stamped. So if you get confused about which one is which, F obviously for front, R for the rear. Uh, other ways you can tell is that the front one is actually a little bit shorter than the rear one. But just look for the, the F stamped on the front here. Now we're doing this as per the workshop manual specifications. There is a little bit of a debate online as to how this should be done. I'm following the manual. If we look on the front of the sprocket, you'll notice we've got these two holes here and then we've got a smaller, smaller hole here. I can give you a quick look here. You see we've got this pin up here and here's the, uh, the cam. That slots onto there like so. Now, what we need to do is this second hole here, we need to place that at approximately half past nine. If this was a clock, we need that hole to be at approximately half past nine. So I'm going to take this chain and you want to make sure that your chain is taut, make sure it's not caught on anything. If it does feel like it's caught, if it's down here and it feels like it's caught, don't go yanking it. 
get yourself a, a 17 millimeter spanner and just ever so slightly wiggle back and forth on, on that crankshaft and put a little bit of upward pressure and that should help you to release the rest of the chain. Now we're gonna take our sprocket and remember, don't drop anything. And we're gonna put it inside here and put the teeth into position. Now that is too high. That's more like 10 o'clock. We need to come down a little bit on that. So we're gonna take the slack off, drop it down into the engine, lift the chain up and move the chain across a few teeth. Like so. See how we went that way? The sprocket went clockwise. So we need to go the other way. So we need to come down into the engine. We need to lift the chain off, rotate the chain over and we're going to do it one more time, maybe two more teeth. There we are. And that is pretty much bang on where we need it to be. Now, to make sure that this is in the right place, we can actually use the cam as a guide. The cam has a line and an arrow on it. I'm really hoping you guys can see this in focus. We have a line and an arrow. Now that line and arrow, they line up with the top of the head here and they line up pointing left. If this is the front cylinder, they point left. Notice how the, the pin is on the left hand side. So we can pop the cam in place, should spin freely, should rotate on its own without any friction. You shouldn't need to put any pressure on the sprocket in order to get it onto the cam. So if something's not sat right, take it off. Make sure that cam is in nice and properly. No resistance. And try again. There we go. See how that just slid straight on there? Now the problem we've got now is that if you look, that arrow is not parallel to the engine. It's actually pointing at about nine o'clock, 9.30 and we'll look down and we'll see whether or not that RT is still straight. And it's not in, in this case. So I'm gonna rotate ever so slightly. There we are. You might have seen the sprocket move. And this has gone even further up now, so we need to readjust this. We need to take the sprocket off and we need to move a tooth around There we are, so we're now at nine o'clock, 9.30. Bring that cam back down. Pop it into position. Now that is pretty close. Bit of wiggle here because we've got no tension on the chain. But once we release that tensioner, that should align to here. But to be safe, we'll just check, take the cam off, do one more tooth, like so, bring that cam down. Pop that in there. And now you can see that it's actually not straight at all and it's actually pointing down. I'm not 100% happy with that, so I'm gonna adjust it again. Take the cam off. Move it one tooth over. And then pull the chain up and slide it over. Like so. Rotate the cam. Pop it into position. If I were to hold the slack, you should see that that line, that arrow, is completely horizontal and parallel with the top of the engine. So that's number one done. And it is the same process for the rear. You wanna make sure that if you're facing the rear cylinder in the same way that we are here with the front one, if we were to spin the engine around, it would be the same orientation. So the arrow would still need to come this way. We still want the cam chain tensioner to be loose so that we've got ex excess on the, uh, on the chain. The only difference is that the sprocket and the cam need to align to a different point on the engine. I'll show you in a minute. So once this is on, 
what we need to do is add our washer. And you might remember this from the previous video where I took this all apart. Okay, and then we can grab our torque wrench. Again, 14 to 16 Newton meters. About there. Turn the engine again. And that's it guys, your cams are back in, everything is timed correctly. We can test this by putting that RT back to the top of the crank. So if we grab the spanner and then we can check, yep, that arrow on the cam is completely horizontal. And if we come over to the other side and have a look around, that too is also completely horizontal. The only thing we have left to do now is to flatten these edges down of these washers. I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a blunt flathead screwdriver, get in behind there and just encourage, we don't want to go scratching anything if we don't have to. Okay, and it's really important before we put the heads cases back on. Okay, so that right there is the end of the cam chain tensioner and it is in its compressed orientation at the moment so we need to make sure that before we start putting the head cases back on that we remove our stoppers that we put in some time ago and allow that cam chain tensioner to put tension onto the cam chain rather than going in and trying to pull the cam chain tensioner at the base where the lever is what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to put a stopper in here maybe use some pliers like so and i'm going to actually wedge this in here up against the cam chain tensioner. I'm then going to release the cam chain tensioner by pulling out the uh, the stopper that we've got which is underneath this cam here and hopefully we're not going to drop this piece of metal down into the engine that is something that you need to take note of. Um, we're going to do that and you will see that when I release these pliers the cam chain tensioner will release and put pressure back on the chain. So let's see if we can do this without losing that piece of metal. Okay. We managed to uh, remove that stopper. And as you can see, the ratchet releases. And now there is tension on the chain. Okay, folks. So the cams are in, the sprockets are in. The cam chain and the cam chain tensioner is all sorted. The head bolts have been torqued down to their correct specifications. Uh, don't forget that these bolts that hold these washers on, you must use Loctite with them. If you do not use Loctite with them, you're asking for trouble. So please make sure that you're using appropriate Loctite here. Loctite that is incredibly strong is required on these cams. This is gonna be spinning at such a high rate that if you're using something that's only designed for you know um, low torque settings uh, it's not a good idea you're going to end up with a bolt in the bottom of your engine and ultimately you know destroy your bottom end so um, make sure you're using the correct stuff there one thing that you need to know before we put any liquid gasket on this and put the heads back on sorry the cases back on this void here there's one on each side on the, for the cams these need to be pre-filled with the oil that you are going to be putting in the bottom end of the engine.
Okay guys, and that's it. So the engine is officially completely back together. Everything's torqued, we've got our liquid gasket on, cams are in, chains in, everything's done, clutches in. I just gotta put the uh, the stator cover on the side here. I'm just working on getting rid of the, uh, the old gasket off the side here, and then I can put a new gasket on, put the stator cover back on, and the engine can go back into the frame. I'm really hoping that we can really smash through the next few days and get this bike finished. I would love to be able to get on the road next weekend. The weather we've been having is absolutely fantastic and we'll see. I'm going to try my hardest. The next few videos won't be quite as in-depth as the ones up until this point because you've already seen me do most of the stuff that I'm already that I'm going to be doing again now just in reverse so putting the bike back into the sorry putting the engine back into the frame you've seen me take it out same process just in reverse but I will of course be covering the things that I need to cover in particular of course the sinking of the carburetors the back bleeding of the clutch all those sorts of bits and pieces I'll see you guys Wednesday night. We'll be live on the channel at 11 p.m. UK time. If you can make it, that would be great. Hopefully we'll have a special guest there again this week and we've got all those audio problems figured out and fixed. So until then guys, take care of yourselves and I will see you on Wednesday.